Welcome back. We've just demonstrated one of the fundamental principles of corporate finance, applying NPV for the purposes of investment decision making. And now, it's time to introduce the most important alternative to the NPV method, the internal rate of return, commonly referred to as IRR. It is defined as the discount rate that makes the net present value equal to zero. The IRR is about as close as we can get to the NPV without actually calculating it. The basic rationale behind this method is that it delivers a single discount rate, which summarizes the merits of a project. The number doesn't depend on the interest rates that are currently offered in the economy. That's why it's called the internal rate in the sense that it only depends on the cash flows of the project. Let's illustrate the idea by providing the following example. A project costs $10 to be realized today and pays $11 in one year. Here's a timeline for that. We know that the net present value of the project can be calculated as minus $10 plus $11 divided by 1 plus R to the power of 1, where R is the discount rate. Now, suppose we don't know R in advance. What would be the discount rate that makes NPV equal to zero? In other words, what is the internal rate of return for this investment opportunity? Let's begin by picking a random discount rate of 9%, which yields the following result. As we can see, the result for NPV is positive, so we need to pick a higher discount rate. How about 11%? This makes for an NPV of minus 9 cents. Hmm, let's try with 10%. Okay, this results in a net present value of $0. Voila! This trial and error procedure tells us that the NPV of the project is 0 when the discount rate R equals 10%. In other words, if the actual discount rate is 10%, the investment is economically a break-even proposition for us because it doesn't create or destroy value. That's why we are indifferent between taking or abandoning this opportunity when its NPV is zero. We say that 10% is the project's internal rate of return. Great! Let's answer the following question. Is a project with a 10% IRR a good or a bad investment? Well, that depends on the discount rate we will use. NPV is positive for discount rates below 10% and negative for discount rates above 10%. Thus, the IRR rule goes hand in hand with the NPV rule we introduced earlier. And what does the IRR rule state in fact? Accept an investment if its IRR is greater than the discount rate, reject it if the IRR is less than the discount rate, and stay indifferent if the IRR is equal to the discount rate. This rule is very important, so let it stick in your mind. Okay. Now that we know how to interpret the internal rate of return, it's time to express its formula algebraically. For a project with one investment outflow, made initially, we have the following. On the left side of the equation, we have the sum of all cash flows discounted at the IRR. On the right side, we have the initial investment outlay. You might feel a little confused, however, there's no need to worry. Let's rearrange the equation a little bit. We'll have the following. We moved the initial outlay from the investment on the left side, and now it looks like the NPV formula. Well, not exactly. The difference is that instead of using the required rate of return, we now have the internal rate of return as a discount factor. Another point to note is that this time, we do not know it in advance. Right. Many investments have cash flow patterns in which outlays occur both at time zero and at future dates. Thus, in such cases, we could define IRR as the discount rate that makes the sum of the present values of all cash flows equal to zero using the following version of the formula. Excellent. Now that we know the general formula for IRR, we are ready for a more complicated example. In our previous video, we calculated the net present value of Alpha's project for building a plant for producing a new type of ship. The cash flows associated with the project are depicted on the timeline you see here. The project has an NPV of $27,190,627, and on a standalone basis, it feels like a value-creating endeavor. Suppose that the CEO of the corporation is still hesitant about the initiative and needs additional proof to make sure the investment is worth taking. He assigns finding out the project's internal rate of return to the finance department. The required rate of return is 9%. Right. By substituting the parameters, we obtain the following equation. The only unknown here is IRR. In our previous example, we used a trial and error method, which consisted in guessing IRR through several iterations. Obviously, this is a time-consuming and ineffective process, especially when the number of cash flows increases. Don't worry, though. In reality, analysts use spreadsheet software or financial calculators, which makes it so much easier. 
Let's demonstrate how this is done by using the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus calculator. We enter cash flow mode by pressing CF. It's always a good practice to clear the data memory by pressing second, CE slash C. Now let's enter the relevant data. The initial cash flow, cash flow zero is negative 150 million. Then we input the rest of the cash flows. CO1 equals 70 million. Here, instead of entering the next two flows manually, we can simply change the cash flow frequency from 1 to 3 because their amount is the same as that of the first cash flow. We press IRR and compute for it. The result is 18.91% rounded to the second decimal point. All we need to do now is follow the IRR decision rule. Alpha Corporation's required rate of return is 9%, which is lower than the internal rate of return we've just calculated. That's why the investment should be accepted. Well done. We're making excellent progress. We are done with NPV and IRR, which are crucial. In our next videos, we'll focus on four other measures used in the capital budgeting process. Thank you for watching.